How's it going guys? Back at it with another video. And this one is on a 3D printed model 120. Um, nuclear alert siren for the San Onofre nuclear power plant. If you want any more information about them specifically, uh, go ahead and check the description uh, to Dude Rocks 5539 He does a lot of videos about them, or he's done some videos about them prior. And he, uh, great knowledge, because kn he knows exactly what he's talking about with them. They're a truly unique siren, and they're um, one of my favorites now, soon the coming to be, at least. But this is a fully 3D printed model of one. Not exactly quite sure the scale, um, but even at the size it is now, it is still incredibly large. It is the biggest 3D printed siren that I have ever made, by far. Um, just to kind of illustrate that, I am also recording this with my phone, so I do apologize. But here's a standard, like a, a generic Coke can, and just for size comparison, you can kind of get a, a view of just how big this thing really is by comparison. So it is by no means small. This is the siren itself, the head, and then here is the blower. This is a model of the Paxton centrifugal supercharger. This is also all 3D printed. And it's hooked up to a, uh, a little PWM speed controller. I apologize for the wind if you can hear that coming through the microphone. And uh, it's all been tuned to power the siren uh, correctly. Now the siren, as you can see, has eight horns. However, the rotor is a five-port rotor, so it gives it a. Uh, you would uh, you would imagine it would give it an offset kind of tonality to it, but surprisingly, the the eight ports of the of the stator really are the most dominant frequency you're going to hear. Um, there's a little bit of a unique kind of pitch to it, but not much. Um, certainly, you hear it a lot more without the horns on it. But there's a, an internal diffuser that's inside of the siren, actually, which is there to diffuse the air path as it's coming in. Don't know how well you can see that. The sun's probably not cooperating too well. But down inside there, there is a diffuser that's got eight segments. There's walls that are about right here on the internal uh, structure of this, and the rotor sits in between the diffuser and the stator. And um, so there's eight walls that stick out from that. And since these walls are offset, the rotor um, chops against the internal walls of the diffuser. And then you also get that effect of it chopping against the actual edge of the, uh, the stator. So you get almost like a 16 port kind of sound, but it's very, very muffled. It's not, it's not by any means dominant. But um, I'll go ahead and let you guys hear what it sounds like. Um, this is with a DC. Uh, motor for the rotor motor um, and I have not hooked it up to the speed controller so I can actually can attenuate the frequency to sound correct but that's for a later date so this is also going to be a little awkward to do because I am recording this with my phone so setting the blower up and getting it ready to go is going to be a little bit of a hassle but um, yeah just kind of bear with me so I'm going to go ahead and grab the battery. So there it is set up on top of the blower. You can see the blower sitting down below. Now, the siren is incomplete. It does not have the dummy motor that's going to sit on top of the actual motor, which is right here, because at this scale, it doesn't need to have a motor that big to get it to spin up to the right speed. And it doesn't have the dummy motor, and then I also have to do a bit of editing to change a bit of the detail on it and also put the frame on the bottom and get the whole thing situated the way it's supposed to be. Now, the, blow, the rotor, uh, rotor motor is just controlled by just a standard, you know, lithium single cell battery. Um, eventually, like I said, it's going to be having a speed controller so I actually can get the frequency correct. But it's also really awkward to try to hold up because it's so top heavy. The thing weighs, in, it, it, ha it has some incredible weight to it for with the size. Um, and then there's, there's my boot holding it up, but uh, we'll go ahead and fire up the, the blower and I'll see if we can get a quick test out of it. So I'll spin the blower up. I also cannot do this for very long because I do live in a residential area and I don't want to annoy my neighbors too much. 
Um, so we'll get this blower spinning up. Let's hope this thing doesn't fall apart catastrophically. Now that's just the blower. I'll give it a little tiny, tiny growl. I also forgot to mention that little thing. It's because this has a, a staggered rotor, or a, a rotor that is not symmetrical with the stator, it gives it a very, very prominent windmilling effect. So with the blower at full, at full pressure, if you give it just a tiny little kick to get the rotor spinning, the thing will spin up to about, its, about half of its full RPM. So that's one thing that I have to also deal with. So if you saw that I tapped that and I got the motor to start, as soon as it got a little push, it just took off by itself. So getting this thing to actually have a very distinct um, attack signal is kind of a it's kind of a pain so we'll go ahead and get this spun up I'm also going to try to get the microphone in an optimum position so that it's not completely drowned out by the volume of the siren so here's just the blower again and uh, I'll go for one for a very small alert and then a small attack Now that's really the only way I can get this thing to wind down completely is if I actually fluctuate the blower speed, which is hence why I have this speed controller. So now let's go ahead and we'll go for a very, very short attack, as I said, because I do have neighbors and I don't want to annoy them. So there it is. That is my 3D printed SoCal Model 120. Hope you guys enjoyed and uh, leave your comments down below. I appreciate you guys giving me the views.